Amtrak's long-haul trains provide crucial connections for people nationwide, and the Northeast Corridor is critical for commuters in that part of the country. Equally important, and too often ignored, are regional rail connections in other places in the United States. My home state of North Carolina has had a nearly four decades long partnership with Amtrak to do just that for its citizens. And in this video, you'll see two trains serving the heart of North Carolina. Hello, jet setters and rail fans. I'm Jeff Brooks from greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in my hometown of Greensboro, North Carolina. I've got to get over to Raleigh, and I'm super fortunate that North Carolina has such a robust rail network that I'm able to leave here in the morning, get over to Raleigh, and be back before dinner time. My first leg was on the Carolinian, Amtrak service that runs from Charlotte up to New York. But I just joined for the 90-minute trip from Greensboro to Raleigh with three intermediate stops over 80 miles. And this afternoon, I'll make the trip in reverse on the Piedmont, a special train unique to North Carolina. Greensboro is known as the Gate City because it serves as the gateway from the eastern part of the state into the west when the only reliable means of transportation was on a train. This depot was once a bustling and vital connection point. Even today, it served as a great spot to wait for my train. If everything was on time, I'd arrive in Raleigh at 10.05 in the morning, which was roughly the same as if I'd taken a car. The trip all the way to New York takes about 11 hours. My train was scheduled to depart at 8.31 and was running on time, so I headed out to the platform, where I caught a glimpse of the southbound Piedmont. Now that would be my ride back. I think this may have been one of my favorite train rides yet, but stick around for the return trip from Raleigh to see why. After about a dozen passengers got on board, off it went. Next up, my northbound train. These two trains, the Carolinian and the Piedmont, are jointly funded by Amtrak and North Carolina's Department of Transportation. This unique model dates back to the mid-1980s and has served the state well. It's this kind of partnership that opens up intercity connections via rail. I, I just wish there were more opportunities for this kind of uh, rail connection. My train was on time and I quickly checked in and hopped on board. I'd booked a business class seat to Raleigh because I wanted to sit toward the back of the train. I was assigned an aisle seat and the window was already occupied, which was not ideal, particularly for your viewing pleasure. But here's a nearby empty row. Once I'd settled in, I checked the speed of the Wi-Fi on the train. It was disappointing, I'm sorry to say. Thankfully, none of my work required access to the web. I sure wish it were possible to select a particular seat or room on Amtrak during the online booking process. Oh well, maybe someday. Right on time, we left Greensboro behind. I asked the conductor if there were an opportunity for me to move. At first he said no because the train was pretty full, which I took as a good thing. More people traveling is definitely a positive sign in my book. But the conductor soon returned and offered me the back table. Now that was fantastic news. There are two of these at the back of the car and I selected the one on the left side. After we left Greensboro, Raleigh was only four stops away. This was a quick trip with only brief pauses in Burlington, Durham, and Cary before we would pull into Raleigh a short hour and 36 minutes later. The Carolinian has a cafe car, which I visited. Business class passengers can enjoy free non-alcoholic drinks, so I grabbed a bottle of water. The attendant told me it's important for business class passengers to identify themselves so they don't have to pay. But I was lucky, she said, because she'd seen which car I came from. There are two bathrooms in the car and they're a pretty standard issue for Amtrak. As always, be sure to lock the door. Based on comments I'm seeing, it seems like there's a chronic problem of people failing to do that and getting walked in on. Nobody needs that. Today's journey would take us along part of the North Carolina Railroad, which is owned by the state of North Carolina and leased to Norfolk Southern. The North Carolina Railroad dates back to 1849 when the state's legislature saw the need to connect the central part of the state, where I live, known as the Piedmont, with the coast. In its early days, it was called the Tree of Life for the state, in part, because North Carolina just doesn't have very many good navigable rivers. Our train passed through Elon University, where I went to law school. Speaking of the law, in a weird legal quirk, kind of like Amtrak, the North Carolina Railroad is a private corporation, but 
100% of the stock is owned by the state, so all dividends are paid to the state, which kind of makes it state-owned, but not really. It's a mind-bender, and also this is not really that interesting, so let's move on. The North Carolina Railroad carries some 1 million carloads of freight and 300,000 passengers each year. But that's not to mention the tremendous economic impact railroads have on their surrounding communities. Access to reliable rail allows companies to improve their supply chains and increase the effects they have on the cities and towns where they are. But passenger trains are why we're here today. And I'd much rather leave everybody else to deal with the traffic. I'm just going to sit back, relax, and knock out this work. One of the best things about this train is the fact that I can get this work done. There's no way I could do it if I had to drive. Plus, I got these views. It was 1984 when Amtrak and the state of North Carolina partnered to introduce the Carolinian I'm on right now. North Carolina paid a subsidy to add a rail link from Charlotte to Raleigh, where it connected with the old Palmetto Line. Unfortunately, ridership didn't take off, and that iteration of this train only lasted a year. Another six years later, in 1990, Amtrak and the state tried it again. This time, it was successful and gave birth to daily Carolinian service from Charlotte to New York. The state of North Carolina still subsidizes the Carolinian's costs all the way up to the border with Virginia. Before long, we were in Durham, which meant Raleigh would be coming up soon. Just made it to Cary, North Carolina. Uh, our next stop is Raleigh, where I'm getting off. It's also a smoke break. I think our car just closed until we leave, because they leave Raleigh. Uh, so a lot going on, but uh, I'm about to hop off. I quickly made my way to the platform to bid a fond farewell to the Carolinian before it headed north to New York. Not sure about you, but I sure wish more cities and towns across this country were connected by Amtrak. Uh, anyway, I've got to run into to Raleigh, knock out a little bit of work, and then come right back for the Piedmont. The spectacular Raleigh Union Station opened in 2018, but I don't really get why it's called a Union Station, because my understanding of that term is that it's used to represent a station that served multiple train lines. This one only has Amtrak service. What am I missing? Uh, let me know below. All work and no play make Jeb a dull boy. So I thought I'd show you some of the highlights around downtown Raleigh, just steps away from the, uh, the train station. Raleigh is our state's capital and as a result is home to much of our state's government. Here's our state capital, which I'm sure you'll agree looks way better than the new one. Okay, that's a matter of personal preference. But I went to the old one for the first time ever and it was pretty nice. I also checked out our state's historical museum and its exhibits about Blackbeard, the pirate, and the Wright brothers, all of whom used our state's coast for semi-commercial activities. Shout out to all of you who watched the Northeast Regional video. Uh, looks like I had to buy another $7 umbrella. Just one this time because I'm on my own. It was lunchtime, so I grabbed a quick bite and then got back to work. Before long, it was time to catch the train. Once the rain subsided back at Union Station, I headed up to the observation platform where I got a good view of my train, which had just arrived. That was a really productive visit to Raleigh, but it's time to head home to the Gate City, Greensboro. Best way to do that is on the Piedmont service. Let's go check it out. The Piedmont runs between Raleigh and Charlotte six times each day. It's a sister train to the Carolinian and serves as a fantastic way to travel the central and most heavily populated corridor of North Carolina. This was a stormy afternoon, and I was grateful that Raleigh Station allows for covered boarding. The rolling stock, that's the engines and cars, are owned by the state of North Carolina, but operations are handled mostly by Amtrak employees. Boarding was again on time and smooth. The seats, all coach, are not reserved. So I picked one on the opposite side of the train for my ride over. You gotta see new stuff, am I right? The seats are comfortable with massive windows and leg room for days. There's a tray table, a footrest, and a 120 volt plug. 
My seat also included a USB wire, but I think that was really only due to the previous passenger's unfortunate loss. My condolences to you. Like the Carolinian, Wi-Fi is available. I'm not sure why, but this train offered significant improvements in speed. And just like that, we were on our way. After we left Raleigh, Greensboro was only four stops away. This was another quick trip with only brief pauses in the same cities as before, Cary, Durham, and Burlington, before we'd pull into Greensboro just a short hour and 31 minutes later. There's a lounge car, and passengers on the Piedmont have access to free bottles of water and coffee, along with vending machines. In addition to the standard seat like I have, there are also unreserved tables if you need more space. One of the cool things about this train is that it, along with the Carolinian, is marketed by the state under the NC by Train brand. The state offers a special website, a dedicated phone line, sets its own schedules for the Piedmont, and even offers free bus passes for some transit systems along the route. I wish more states offered something like that. The state's leaders wanted to capitalize on the success of the Carolinian train, and so in the 1990s, they decided to acquire their own rolling stock. In May of 1995, the Piedmont began. Originally, there was just one round trip each day. It started with an early departure from Charlotte and a nighttime return from Raleigh. In 2010, an additional daily round trip was added. In 2018, service reached six a day, or three round trips. After being cut down due to COVID, the Piedmont returned to its three daily round trip trips between Raleigh and Charlotte in May 2021. It's just so relaxing. Apparently, on certain days and in some sections of the route, you might see train hosts. These are volunteers who share interesting facts about the train and its route. Unfortunately, there weren't any when I was on board. The state owns eight locomotives, each named for a different city. There are also 14 coaches and six lounge and baggage cars in the fleet. Each of these is named for an important symbol or landmark in the state. It appears some new federal money has been allocated to upgrade the rolling stock, so keep an eye out for some improvements. One of the best features Amtrak offers is their Track-A-Train tool. It's on the website, and I used it to keep an eye on our route. We were on time, and we're reaching speeds of up to 79 miles an hour. In 2019, more than 200,000 people used the Piedmont, its highest ridership up until that point. We'd reached Durham, North Carolina, home to Duke University. But stops on the Piedmont don't last long. The bathrooms on this train, while similar to the Carolinian, have a bit more, I don't know what you'd call it, maybe character? You can check your bags in the Piedmont, but you can also bring carry-on sized bags into the car with you. There's space here. As you can imagine, between Amtrak, the North Carolina Department of Transportation, Norfolk Southern, and the North Carolina Railroad, things quickly get really complicated. In the early 2000s, it was clear the tracks needed some attention. In 2011, the parties all agreed and a deal was reached for $461 million in federal grants to improve infrastructure. The deal meant adding additional double track and passing sidings, as well as reducing curves, all of which cut a whopping 13 minutes in travel times, but I guess it all eventually adds up. I could have made this trip in a car and it would have been about the same length of time, but I wouldn't have been as productive on the ride over, nor as comfortable. The schedule worked really well for me, but even with six trips a day, it, it won't for everyone. Now, there were several people who appeared to be business travelers or maybe commuters, but most of my fellow passengers seemed to be taking a day trip for fun. In short, I really wish there were more trains like this around the U.S. I, I think North Carolina's support has gone a long way to ensuring this route remains in place. Let me know in the comments what other regions, not currently served by rail, you think would benefit from this kind of service. Sadly, I knew my time on the train was drawing to a close when I noticed the Greensboro skyline come into view. 
we pulled into downtown Greensboro, and I got off and waved goodbye to the Piedmont. That certainly made my uh, North Carolina heart swell with pride. Thanks for watching, and between now and the next time, see you on the rails.